Dustin Norris here at the Anderson County Museum and it is the second Tuesday of the month and that means it's time for our Heritage and History program. Uh, as you know we can't have visitors in the museum right now so we thought that we'd bring the program to you digitally uh, for this month and we're going to focus this time on the Anderson Trophy and the Glidden Road Tours that surrounded its creation. Uh, this is a really interesting point in, in Anderson history. It highlights a time when Anderson was growing as a town and becoming a destination city in many respects. So um, it's a fun time period to study and also a really interesting artifact to study. So join in with us and uh, we're going to dive right in. In the early days of the automobile, there were a lot of challenges that faced motorists and roads were one of them. The infrastructure was just not there um, for automobiles, which were significantly heavier than wagons at the time. Uh, two of the main ingredients in South Carolina for roads were clay and sand. And a lot of times these would be combined together with sand as the stabilizer and clay as the binding agent to make sort of a compacted harder road. But uh, these pictures you see here, no matter what would happen, the weight of the automobile and even wagon tracks would um, break this up, cause puddles and ruts. And um, roads were just not able to support the growing amount of traffic from automobiles. The other issue that was that automobiles were still evolving uh, in terms of their applicability. Uh, this picture here that you see is uh, sort of a famous one in Anderson history. It was uh, used a lot by Fred Witten, who was uh, sort of an unofficial, official Anderson historian. Uh, this one is Dr. Ashmore, who's working on his vehicle while he's being passed on either side by horses. Uh, the running joke, you know, was that uh, automobiles just would break down. You'd see them sitting on the side of the road and people struggling to get them started. And then somebody would pass on a horse and say, something like, you know, get a horse, you know, why, why would you even bother with something that's not ready yet? Um, and you can see the same thing in this photo where the actual frame of a vehicle is being hauled by a team of horses. So um, we see a lot of the same thing today too. If you look on social media and with electric cars, you might see a photo of an electric car that has run out of battery that's uh, being charged by a gas generator. Um, so the same sort of conversations are occurring now as we're looking at replacing infrastructure that we already have with futuristic infrastructure for electric cars. One of the answers to these problems that were arising was sort of collective action by motorists who would come together in motor clubs and then eventually nine of these clubs joined together to form the American Automobile Association in 1902. Uh, AAA, as it has come to be known, advocated for improvements in road infrastructure and improvements in automobile construction. Uh, they wanted a better, more uh, durable vehicle that could uh, that had infrastructure for them to use it in the ways that they wanted to use them. AAA organized a uh, sort of a gathering of motorists from all across the country um, that arrived all together at the World's Fair in 1904 in St. Louis. Uh, this attracted a lot of attention at the time, and one of the results of it was that awareness was drawn to the cause that AAA was um, putting forth, and also a lot of the leading minds in the, in the uh, industry, automobile industry, were brought together to uh, sort of brainstorm and see what things could work to get this message out here and uh, the birth of reliability runs or Glidden Tours came out of that first meeting at the World's Fair. One of the folks that met up at that World's Fair meeting was Charles Glidden, and he is the namesake, of course, of the Glidden Tours. He was a uh, financier, an industrialist, and uh, actually a telephone pioneer. He worked with uh, Alexander Graham Bell on some of the improvements that they made to telecommunications. Uh, so he had some hands in different places in America at the time. Uh, the picture you see here, he's with his wife, Lucy. Uh, they were actually the first two people to uh, complete a world tour uh, in an automobile in 1902. So he had his feet wet in this, in this cause from an early uh, time. 
But uh, he was one of the ones who fronted the money to start these Glidden Tours, uh, which would promote automobiles and road improvements. Glidden Tours were organized as an effort to, um, to prove the durability and endurance of vehicles, um, show off the improvements that were being made, and prove to America that automobiles were safe and efficient means of travel. Uh, they were held between 1904 and 1913, and uh, not only did it challenge the drivers uh, to meet their uh, checkpoints at certain times, it was sort of a contest, uh, but it also challenged the auto manufacturers to produce better and durable vehicles so that they could have their opportunity to uh, claim success in the tour. Anderson featured in the, uh, at least first in the 1911 Glidden Tour, and you're looking here at a map of that route. It took about uh, 1,454 miles from uh, New York City to Jacksonville, Florida. Um, this was a long and grueling journey, and a lot of the pictures that we'll see feature the challenges that uh, that the drivers faced. Uh, you'll see the note here that uh, 64 cars competed and 14 ended with perfect scores. Uh, by this point, the scores were arrived at based on reaching checkpoints under the time constraints. So that's how they were deriving who was uh, leading in the scoreboard. If you were to take off today from New York to Florida in a car, it would take hours and hours and hours. Um, but back then, the conditions that these drivers were facing made this trip take a significantly longer time. Um, a couple of the challenges that they faced, one, uh, the picture that we're looking at here, um, the car had uh, apparently broke down and is being pushed along by some of the other drivers. The drivers would often team together and try to help each other get through the course. Um, this next picture you'll see that road conditions were obviously still a major challenge. Uh, soft shoulders and wet roads would cause vehicles to get stuck at various points along the path and uh, need to be towed out or some of them actually abandoned and had to um, be returned for. Um, weather was also a concern. Uh, a lot of the roads led into creeks and rivers that had to be crossed, and there were places that they could be crossed by vehicles, uh, like this car right here you can see is doing. But uh, in certain cases, the weather would cause these swells that would make things impassable. So there was a lot of strategy in planning your route as well. Anderson being included on the route was uh, really a major thing. And the people of Anderson wanted to make it an event. You know, when the cars came in, they wanted to welcome them and make this a major community event. Uh, the picture that we see here is a parade that was advertising for the Glidden Tour arrival back in 1911, where uh, floats and banners had been made. Uh, the Anderson is my town slogan arose during this time as well. Um, and people may remember, of course, the the large sign, that the Anderson's My Town sign above downtown that uh, became sort of a feature of the town for many years to come. But that arose during this time, and you can see here a, a famous picture of Sheriff Burris King, who was uh, also known as Big King, wearing the straw hats, that the sort of sombrero-style hats that they uh, designed with that Anderson's My Town slogan that people were gonna to wear to welcome the drivers. Uh, as kind of a side note, Big King was billed at the time as being the largest sheriff in the nation. You can see there he's a pretty large fella. Um, he reportedly weighed in at about 426 pounds. This is a very famous photo of the Glidden Tour participants after arriving in Anderson, lined up around the courthouse square. Um, you can see featured in the Upper left is the Confederate Monument, and all around it, you can see the sort of tropical style plants that had been installed by the uh, Civic Association over the past five to six years. Um, that was headed up by Pearl Fant um, and several other major figures in Anderson history. They wanted to beautify Anderson, make this place a destination, um, and some of these more exotic looking plants they thought aided in that goal. 
Uh, but you can see the sheer number of, of cars that had made it. This was a huge celebration. And um, Anderson wanted to do even more to make this part of this leg of the journey, I guess, uh, one of the featured legs. The best way to draw attention to Anderson as, as, the, as a focal point of the journey was to set up the Anderson South Carolina Perpetual Automobile Touring Trophy that we refer to lovingly as the Anderson Trophy. Now, uh, Glidden himself had a trophy that he awarded to the uh, winning team, but uh, the Anderson Trophy was meant to be awarded to the person with the best time, like the individual with the best time upon arrival to Anderson. Um, this was a $1,200 prize uh, at the time, and it takes the form of a very large punch bowl with a ladle that you can see at the bottom of the picture. It was created by J.E. Caldwell and Company Jewelers in Philadelphia. So this is a silver um, punch bowl shape. You can see a lot of the very intricate design work that went into making this a, a beautiful award, something that was very sought after and that changed hands over the next couple of years of the uh, Glidden Tour series. There's quite a variety of design elements that are included in the trophy uh, you can see a number of different natural features like different leaves and plants that are uh, included. Uh, also around the rim and at different parts of the trophy are some uh, tires and wheels that are incorporated into the design for obvious reasons. Uh, you see the palmetto tree down at the bottom. Also the um, ladle includes the um, AAA logo. Uh, in this zoomed in picture you can see it says Court, uh, County Courthouse Anderson, and it features a very accurate depiction of the courthouse at the time of, of the road tour. Um, this is also a really interesting picture to people because it includes features of the courthouse that were original before the uh, remodeling that occurred in the uh, 1930s and 40s, uh, which removed uh, mainly uh, what people refer to as the turret on the left-hand corner that you see featured prominently. Um, now the shape of the courthouse is more of a bookended uh, shape that does not include that, uh, that turret, but uh, that's something that's really interesting to visitors when they come here to see it. The last of the Glidden Road Tours was uh, completed in 1913, and at that time, the trophy found its way to the uh, AAA headquarters in Florida. Um, today, um, the Anderson County Museum and uh, AAA split time as host sites so that the, the trophy can travel and be seen by a multitude of people. Uh, when it's here, we're very proud to include this as part of our Roots of History exhibit that focuses on transportation more broadly in the history of Anderson County and uh, how it influenced growth in commerce and trade and tourism and the hospitality industry and the various widespread effects that improvements in transportation have had uh, in Anderson history. Well, thank you everybody for watching and giving us so much of your time. Uh, we appreciate the engagement and uh, encourage you to keep following our social media pages and uh, checking in on our website for more museum updates and videos and content that's going to be coming to you digitally. We will be bringing you more Heritage and History programs uh, in the coming months, so just keep an eye on the museum page and uh, stay tuned.